الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد Before we start the tafsir of Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Sa'di رحمه الله I would like to mention hadith from the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم about the superiority and the merits of study in the Quran The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said as it is collected by the Imam Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira radiyallahu an. He said, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بِيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلِيهُمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَّتُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهِ It is tremendous hadith. He said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, whenever a group of believers get together, in one of the houses of Allah, the Masajid, shows you the superiority of the, of the Masjid. He said, reciting the book of Allah and studying it among themselves like the way we're doing now. He said, except that serenity will descend upon them. Allahu Akbar. Serenity, as sakina will descend upon them and the angels, they will encircle them. Allahu Akbar. And you feel it, subhanAllah, you feel, you feel it. And the mercy of Allah will cover them. And Allah himself will mention them among the angels. Allahu Akbar. This is amazing. Uh, this is a tremendous hadith about a tremendous good deed of, about studying the book of Allah, Al-Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Imran, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى كِتَابِ اللَّهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ يَتَوَلَّى فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ وَهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَالُوا لَنْ تَمَسَّنَا النَّارُ إِلَّا أَيَّامًا مَّعْدُودَاتٍ وَغَرَّهُمْ فِي دِينِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جَمَعْنَاهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ لَّا رَيْبَ فِيهِ وَوُفِّيَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَّا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the meaning of which have you not seen those who were given a portion of the scripture. They are invited to the book of Allah to settle their disputes. But a party of them turns away. And they are averse. This is because they say the fire shall not touch us, but for a few number of days. Subhanallah. That which they used to invent regarding their religion has deceived them. How will it be? when we gather them together on the day about which there is no doubt, each person will be paid in full for what he has earned and they will not be dealt with unjustly. Sheikh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Sheikh Rahman bin Sa'di, he said, Allah describes within these noble verses the state of the people of the book, whom he rewarded by bestowing on them his book. It was mandatory on them to follow that book and be foremost in obeying its commandment. However, as Allah notifies us that when they were called towards the decisions of that book, some turned their back towards it, they refused to accept it both in word and in deed. This was the worst behavior. May Allah protect us. Then he said, we will also become deserving of Allah's wrath. Oh, this contains a lesson for us that we should avoid indulging in such behavior. So Allah mentioned this for, for a benefit for us too, so that we don't copy those people. Otherwise, we will also become deserving of Allah's wrath and have to face the same punishment that they faced. Whoever is called towards Allah's book it is compulsory upon him to obey it and believe in it with all his heart. Allah says elsewhere, إِنَّمَا كَانَ قَوْلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ يَقُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا The response of the believers when they are called to Allah and his messenger to judge between them, we hear, they say, we hear and obey. That's it. But how many people are like that? Very few. If a few people that follow the way of Allah and His Messenger, وسلم, and they obey Allah and His Messenger, some people you bring them proof and evidence, they don't want to hear it. And how can you claim you're a believer? 
If you're a true believer, you have to submit to the command of Allah, to the command of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The delusion which causes the people of the book to commit Allah's disobedience is that they said the fire shall not touch us but a few number of days. That which they used to invent regarding their religion has deceived them. They have invented this fictitious opinion from their distorted mind and have commenced it following and indulging in sins and evenness. Subhanallah. So if someone indulges himself in sins, you know, all kinds of disobedience and the sinfulness and all that, and still expect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat them in a very good way. Subhanallah. This is ajeeb. This is very strange. They are in delusion that no matter what they do, they will enter paradise. The belief of theirs is utterly false and baseless. Rather, their culmination will be the worst and it will be extremely sorrowful. For this reason, Allah says, how will it be when we gather them together on the day about which there is no doubt, means the day of judgment. Their state shall be so atrocious that it can't be envisioned. Allah protect us. The day of resurrection will be the day of recompense when justice will be fully done and no excuses will be done to anyone since it is a sure fact that this recompense will be according to the deeds performed. So they have executed, they have executed, makes them deserving of the severest wrath and punishment. SubhanAllah. May Allah protect us. This is very, very serious. One of the uh, scholars of the past, he was known for his piety and he was known for his righteousness. He said something very beautiful about the people who are delusional. You know, they think they have it, but they don't have it. So he was talking about the state of the affair of those people who are like that, delusional. So they rely on Allah's mercy, they rely on hope, false hope, but they don't do anything. So he said, he said, Amalun kassarab. He said, Your action is like a mirage. Mirage is actually a French word, which is like where you know you when you are in the desert and you're thirsty and you see what looks like water because of the heat. See, it looks like a water. So when you get there, you find nothing. That's called mirage. So he's saying, he's describing the deed of those who don't do anything, they just rely on Allah's hope and mercy. He said, He said, your action is like a mirage. And a heart that doesn't have any taqwa in it, doesn't have any fear of Allah in it. He said, and your sins, they are as many as sand pebbles and dirt pebbles. Yet you desire Hur al So all of this, and you desire Hur al He said, He said, how far you are, how far you are, you are drunk, but we, with no alcohol. You're drunk with your desires. Subhanallah. This is, this is the reality. Some people are like that. You know, you cannot just rely on the, on the, on the mercy of Allah, on, on, uh, on the hope that Allah will put you in Jannah without working hard for it. You have to work hard. You have to do the best you can. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all safety from that. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us uh, success May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those to comply with his commandment and those who stay away from his prohibitions. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim.